Welcome to another episode of Metapause Meta, where we come to support you during this challenge, challenging stage of life. I went to our event even uh, recently about menopause and how it affects women. There was a, mo- a documentary about the M factor, and it really opened my eyes on how many women actually suffer from the side effect, the symptoms, and the this understanding from their medical professional about menopause. So today I have uh, Dr. Harmony Robertson here to share with us some techniques and some skill and understanding to help us navigate this session. Hi, Dr. Harmony, how are you today? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking about all things women's health. So oh, that's wait. amazing. We need you. You can see how many posts that we get in our group talking about menopause and asking about it. And it is such a topic that a lot of people actually don't know. In a documentary that I was watching, uh, doctors and GP actually admit they only do one little session about women's menopause and it is quite shocking because I have here so many women in our community trying to find some solution understanding and there's lack of information there so please tell us a little bit about your background and your feel to this Yeah, so I am an Ayurveda women's health practitioner and a doctor of Chinese medicine and acupuncture, so not a Western medical doctor. However, I did start my health career in Western medicine as a registered nurse. I'm still a registered nurse and have been for like almost 20 years. So I've been working in this field for a very, very long time. And I also have an academy that trains other women to become Ayurveda holistic health coaches specifically around women's health. Um, So that's a little bit of a background about me, but I myself had gone through after the birth of my twin boys, who are now 12, (laughs) so it was a while ago, I went through big hormonal changes and it really, really sparked my interest in studying this to a very, very deep level. And like you said, a lot of the um, medical professionals don't go deep dive into menopause and even women's hormones specifically. Um, Obviously, they do have really great knowledge, but with new emerging science and bringing in the old traditions and the old ancient wisdom is what can really help women move forward because there's so, so much truth and benefit in going back to the roots and the basics when it comes to women's hormonal shifts and the way that we perceive that transition through menopause as well in the West, as opposed to the way that they see and deal with it in more of those Eastern cultures. Yeah, I hear you because like it was very interesting that like looking at, I'm keep referring to the M Factor document, uh, documentary that we were looking at. And they said that uh, for men, they have Fawaga to actually fix their little problem. But for women, there was no medicine that really do that unless that there was what hormone replace therapy, which they did get a bad web about it. And they wasn't really truly informed about the side effect and also what result they will be getting. So what will be your way to actually approach this menopause stage for a woman? Yeah, so... I have the the way that I see the transition through menopause is I look at all the modern sort of research and the science, but also through that ancient wisdom lens and also by treating like hundreds of women through my clinic. And what I um, have come up with over time is my higher self methodology, because when we look at menopause, we say, okay, this is a shift in our hormones, but it's not just a shift in our hormones. It's a shift in so much more than that. There's definitely obviously hormonal shifts, but there's energetic shifts, identity shifts. And when the women would come to see me in my clinic, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm having some hot flushes, my hormones are out, let's fix that. There was a whole lot of deeper seated um, problems or issues that needed to be addressed alongside that. So first of all, I look at 
the first pillar of the higher self methodology, which is health alchemy. So we do have to bring our bodies and mind into an optimal state of health for us. And it is a little bit more challenging as we go through that transition, because we know that our hormones support more than just our menstrual cycle. Estrogen, for example, and progesterone, they support our cardiovascular system. They support our bone health. They support our mental health. So when we're having fluctuations in those hormones, then we are going to get health-related symptoms associated with that. Testosterone, which we still need as a woman, that supports our libido. It supports our energy levels. And we know when we transition through this perimenopause to menopause phase, we do have low energy levels. And so it's really looking at all of those pieces and creating, you know, a beautiful I'm not going to say hormonal balance. I was, but I'm not going to say that because the hormonal balance is going to be very uh, difficult to achieve in this time because it is not an illness. It is not a disease. It's a natural transition. And I think that's where a lot of women who are fearing this sort of transition through to menopause um, sometimes have this feeling that it's, it's this burden, it's this disease, but it's just a natural transition of age. And from the Ayurvedic perspective, we look at individual constitutions of a person. And so there are three main doshas or energies, mind, body energies of a person, which is vata, pitta and kapha. And those doshas go out of balance for everyone at every phase of their life, depending on different environmental, food, work situations, all those things, but especially through that menopausal transition. And so we, through health alchemy, we not only look at all of the physical signs and symptoms and the, you know, the blood tests and all of the functional things that come with it, but also the doshic imbalances. How can we bring those doshas back into balance for that individual? And then the second pillar that I look at is the empowered mind paradigm, because there really is this, this shift of acceptance and transition through this phase. Um, a lot of women I've spoken with, they have that sort of like loss of identity or they feel like more of a burden in society. They don't know their place because a lot of women, they're physically going through this transition. But if we look at the way that our Western culture is set up, we're not ready really to go into menopause and to retire and rest and do all those things that are sort of associated with menopause. A lot of women are just like, like kicking it in their careers and, you know, have become later moms and they're still like raising children and all of these things. So there's really has to be this nurture of the mental health space, the mindset and a paradigm shift in that when we look at this menopausal transition. So I address that through Ayurvedic psychology and the layers of the mind. And we go deep into all of that, which we probably won't have time in this 20 minute segment. But then the third pillar that I look at is dharmic impact. And that is again, coming back to like, who am I now? Like what, what impact can I make in, in the world? Now I'm, you know, going through menopause, like you know, some women might feel that they're not seen as um, the people to get promotions in their career or they're not the nurturers anymore. So they have that sort of shift, like where is my purpose? Where is my dharma now placed in this transition period? And really it's about coming back to self and through an Ayurvedic perspective, it's actually where we move into wise womanhood and spiritual growth. And we don't see that as much in the West. So in Ayurveda, it's actually this beautiful transition. You're looked up to as like this goddess of wise wisdom and this, you know, this pillar of experience and life experience. And part of your dharma in this time is to be able to share your wisdom with the younger generation. And so I think there also has to be a, a better understanding of that identity in your life as well. Mm, that you you actually hit the nail in the head because a lot of us when we're talking about menopause we're just looking at the symptoms like how the brain fog the hot sweat and and how our body actually change and I learned that the textron world it actually 
uh, affect your brain function. And that's one of the reasons why that we're getting that brain fog and not feeling like ourselves. And there's very lack of support in, in what you can actually do to it in a medicine sort of sense. So what is the role of acupuncture in Chinese medicine in balancing hormone that will in, in, uh, enhance the overall, uh, overall well-being? Yeah, so as I spoke on for the Ayurvedic lens, we look at the individual constitution and the doshas. So I can go back to what you can do at home. Whereas with the acupuncture, we look at the yin and the the yang. So the and the two energies of the the system. And with menopause, a lot of the time they're going through a transition where there's less yin, less in the body. And so the acupuncture works on again. It's worked on the individual. So there can actually be less yang. It really depends on the individual, but a common scenario we see is yin deficiency in the individual. And so there's certain points on the body that we will use to re-regulate the energy and also help with that internal cooling system because a yin deficiency is like, because it's um, a deficiency of the the cool aspects and so you get those hot flushes so to speak so we look at different points or energies in the body and realign those so that we can control some of those symptoms and make that transition a lot more smoother for <laughs> for women going through menopause and I did my um my master's degree in Chinese medicine and acupuncture and my one of my main assignments was on the effects of acupuncture on menopausal women. And the studies show that it is amazing for a lot of women. There's also always going to be, you know, exceptions to the rule, but for a lot of women in supporting their transition through that phase to be able to really support their symptoms. And so I think it is it, wonderful like it can create such a such a difference in their lives um night sweating it's amazing for night sweating as well and like a lot of those symptoms brain fog being able to you know bring that chi or in ayurvedic speak the prana back up towards the the brain the capacity to to be able to think and the clarity and all of that but from the ayurvedic perspective um we look at that individual constitution. So there's things that the woman can do at home to also support themselves when they're not um, on the acupuncture table. And so going back to those doshas, we have to look at what type of imbalance are you having? A vata imbalance is going to be more associated with insomnia, anxiety, the dryness, the dry skins, the vaginal dryness. A pitta imbalance is going to lead to more of those hot flushes, especially through that transition because if you're very pitta in nature and you're not menstruating, which is a flushing out of the pitta, it, it sort of has this trapped heat and energy in the body. So they may have more irritability, more inflammation. And then we've got the kapha that might result in a bit more weight gain, lethargy, fluid retention. So we look at those those individual types and what can you do at home? Well, we have certain dietary principles that we will apply to those constitutions, different herbs. But one thing that every woman going through menopause can do, which has been very, very helpful, is called self abhyanga, which is a self oil massage. And really, you're a not only connecting back to self, connecting to body. And I like to um, tell my clients, you know, put on a beautiful affirmation playlist or something like that so you're really nurturing self because this transition into wise womanhood and our spiritual growth of menopause is really about giving back to self and prioritizing the self-care which maybe once was not so um, available to you because you were raising children or working in a career and all those type of things but this is a really good way to give back to body but it also calms the central nervous system and we know because our hormones can go out of balance so they do sort of fluctuate our central nervous system is also all over the place so having this grounding practice of abhyanga brings us back into our um, center and calms the central nervous system and it has also got a lot of evidence to show that it has supported hot flushes very, very well. And the other thing that it does is it helps to move our lymphatic system. And if we're someone who can um, 
gets a lot of lymphatic congestion. So they get a lot of fluid uh, pitting in their ankles, their legs, edema around their bellies, anything like that is really going to help move all of that fluid and that sense of clarity because we also have lymphatic in through our brain as well. <laughs> oh, that is so true. Like, you know, I'm hearing all of those on like, Oh my God. Yeah. She explains it well. Like this is, this is, this is what is happening. And like we, a lot of us don't know where the symptoms come from. And that is one credit to the Chinese medicine that they have that ancient history of teaching you how to actually look at things a little bit differently. So like I'm Asian, so I'm very open to the Chinese medicines uh, way. And I think for the Western world, they're starting to see the benefit of it and of this alternative medicine. Um, so I know that you have something called her higher, higher self method. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So that's going back to what I said before, the principles of my higher self method are those three core pillars of health alchemy, the empowered mind paradigm and uh, dharmic impact. And when you can start to look at working on all of those three pillars, you can step into your higher self through menopause. A lot of the time I see women going, okay, I'm going through menopause. I feel like this is a decline in everything, a decline in libido, a decline in our age, a decline in our social status, whatever it may come up for them. But really, like I said, if you can master these three aspects of self, you could actually be stepping into your higher self through menopause. There's so much beautiful growth to have and and there's also, I mean, when you go through from perimenopause to menopause, yeah, of course, it feels like a bit of a hormonal roller coaster. I'm still in perimenopause, so I haven't got through to the other side yet. But what I have heard is when you're on the other side and when you can adopt a lot of these Eastern medicine um, routines and, and things, it can actually be such a blissful, beautiful time. And that's really where we get the chance to step into our higher self using these three pillars. Because like I said, it's not just the physical body and the symptoms and the hormonal fluctuations. It's also about the empowered mind paradigm, shifting our mindset through this transition. We have to do that. And also finding the impact that we can make on the world according to our dharma and our dharmic path is all about aligning with our true self, which we get a chance now to reflect on when we go through this transition and to do things that maybe we'd, we'd put on the back burner. Like what are your hobbies? I know for my mum who has gone through menopause, she is now, she is now a koala rescuer. Like she has always loved animals. She doesn't volunteer. And she, I have never seen her feel so more on point with her dharma, her purpose and the impact she's making in the world than now. Like, I don't even think that when she was raising me and my brother, I felt like she felt she was making as much of an impact as she is with these koalas and building a sanctuary on her land to release these beautiful animals. And <laughs> so it, it's really amazing what you can do and how connected you can feel to self when you take those reflective years through that transition. Uh, that sounds like hope for us because to me it is true I feel like that I was reborn when I was 40 yes I feel like that I had a lot more opportunity I have a lot more clarity but of course that is a lo lot of self-work inside as well from our mindset to our body to the alignment it's about clicking those boxes that we were too busy to think about in life. All of those things that have been dragging us to a million pieces. After 40, after your kids starting to left home, you're starting to like get out from childcare and all of that, you're starting to actually focus back on yourself. So I think that your program will highly help us women just finding that clarity. So if you'd like to share, how do people with you? Yeah, absolutely. So my... In social media, my hangout place would probably be Instagram. And I am 
Harmony Inspired Ayurveda on Instagram. So please come and send me a DM there. Love that. I would be happy to connect there. I also do have a free Facebook group, which is the Ayurveda and Women's Health Sisterhood. So I provide a lot of education in there on these type of things. Um, and my website is where you can find all the things, harmonyinspiredhealth.com.au. And I do have a podcast where I do share a lot of these topics. We just did um, a podcast episode with another Chinese medicine doctor on, you know, the chaos of perimenopause through to menopause. Um, I've just done one that came out today, I think, on the on libido, like the shifts in libido and how to get that back. So, yeah, lots of information on the body as well. That sounds amazing. But I would love to invite you to come back to our platform and do a whole webinar with us, talking about your method, giving us a little bit more ideas, because like I love the three pillars, but I don't really fully understand it. And since we only got 20 minutes in here, can't actually say too much, but I would love to invite you back onto our space to share a bit more. Yes, I would love that. Love to go through it all from start to finish and how you can really support yourself through menopause. That sounds amazing. Thank you once again for your time today, Harmony. It's been such a pleasure learning from you. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you once again for joining us on Menopause Matter. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Have a wonderful week ahead.